let's talk through all of my series. Okay guys, hi, hello. We are here in the floor so you guys get to see my TBR cart, some of my other shelves than you get to normally see, and the stack of books that have still not le yet left my floor. I do have some open space now, so I should be able to get these off of my floor now. I just need time to do that. But we are here to talk about all of the series that I have read through this year. I will go ahead and talk about all of them in some detail, but not in extreme detail because I want to get through all of the series. Let's go ahead and start. So the first series that I started the year off with was War for the Rose Thrown by Peter McLean. I don't know. Can you guys see it behind me? Uh, the second book is sitting behind me. My friend Andrew bought it for me for my birthday. I just haven't got around to reading it yet. I read the first book. I loved it. Plan to continue the series. I think it's going to be a great one. I really love the Peaky Blinders feel to it, so we are good with that one. I just need to pick up the rest of the series. The Graven by Essa Hansen. I have read No Fet Gloss and Azura Ghost. I still have a Thera Grave to read. It is sitting directly behind me, so you can't see that, but I am very excited to get to it. It is one of my favorite series of all time. And I, I love it. I love the characters. The characters are so great. Essa's writing is so beautiful, so lush. I, I just, it's amazing. It's amazing. Covenant of Steel. I have finished. I read The Traitor last month. I really enjoyed it. I did have some complaints about the series, but that was because of my personal taste. Nothing Anthony Ryan did. I just, the character driven story got to me a little bit towards the end. And I, I didn't really lose interest, but it felt very long because I was ready for some action. I was ready for Anthony Ryan to put his stamp on it and make it that equally plot driven and character driven story that I love. And that just didn't happen. So I kind of had to give it a 4.5 rating as opposed to a five. But yeah, I still love that series. And I think that that will be the most widely loved series by Anthony Ryan of all of his series, because that is just standard fantasy at its finest loved it. Five Warrior Angels. This is funny because there's a lot of people, a lot of people who have asked me, why haven't you finished the series yet? Listen, guys, I have ADHD. I have dyslexia. That book is almost a thousand pages. I am talking about The Lonesome Crown. I have read uh, The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart. The audiobook keeps getting delayed for the final book. <laughs> and so November, it's on my list for November when the audiobook releases. I will be finishing that series. I do absolutely love it. I'm sad that Brian Lee Durfee has decided that's probably it for him, but if he ever writes anything else, I will be so on top of it. I cannot wait. Tide Child by R.J. Barker. I finished that. Loved it. I loved it just as much as I did Age of Assassins, Blood of Assassins. Can't remember the name of it. Age of Assassins? Is that it? I no, I can't remember the name of it. Age of Assassins is the first book and I just repeated myself like five times. Anyway, loved Tide Child, loved Lucky Mies, who is the main character of the story, loved how the series wrapped up. That is a, that is an excellent, excellent series in my opinion. And I have a hard time saying which one I like better, Tide Child or the Assassin series, because assassins are my thing. And while I like nautical fantasy, it's not my favorite. It's just not. I mean, I know there are so many people who love nautical fantasy. I just really love dark, creepy atmospheres and things like that. And you get that with Thieves and Assassins, not so much with a nautical fantasy, though dark things do happen in Tide Child. Do not get me wrong. That last book was rough and I still enjoyed it. I still enjoyed it though. The Other Side of the Sky by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. Loved it. Loved it. I did think that the second book didn't quite have the oomph that the first book did, but there's an amnesia trope in it and amnesia tropes bug me, especially the way it was used in that book. And I can't talk too much about it because it would kind of spoil the ending of the first book. Whew. But yes, I did love that. And speaking of Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, I finally finished off Illuminae. I love the Illuminae files. They were so good. I love the mixed media and the audiobook, like the combination of the two. I think they are done fantastically. I really love Jay Kristoff, but I also really love Amy Kaufman now because these last two series that I just talked about, excellent, excellent. And the Illuminae Files, a lot of people have asked me, 
does Jay Kristoff come with his uh, typical edge lord stuff? So I would say no. I don't think that the problem with that people typically have with Jay Kristoff and his edge lord humor is present in all of the books. Now there is a character in Gemina that could possibly lend you to believe that they are an edge lord, but I, I think he's sweet, so I don't think that that really qualifies him to be an edge lord. But he does go out of his way to do some pretty extreme things. <laughs> so take that with a grain of salt. And speaking of Jay Kristoff, Empire of the Vampire, I have still only read the first book because it is the only one that has released, but I gave that book five stars. Absolutely loved it. The Bound and the Broken, Ryan Cahill. I DNF'd this series because I did not like the first book. Um, there was nothing really wrong with it. This is a totally a me thing. It has nothing to do with Ryan Cahill, but I don't really like derivative stories. It takes a lot for me to get into a book if I find it derivative. And this one really was. They, everyone said that it was grown up Aragon and I should have listened to that being the major thing that everyone talked about. Grown up Aragon, grown up Aragon. I heard it a thousand times. I should have known we were going to get a fairly derivative story. <laughs> it's sad. It's sad because I really enjoyed Cal Hill's writing. So maybe future projects I would be into, but I have no desire to read this book again and move on to the other ones. No desire. <laughs> Even though I hear they get absolutely fantastic and they change from their original derivative stuff to other things. The Empress of Rome by Kate Quinn. This is a historic trilogy that kind of has three books that are companions, but not necessarily a series. And I haven't decided if I'm continuing with them. I read the first one, I did enjoy it, but it, that could be all I need. It could be all I need. I am petting my dog, if you see my arm moving. He has decided he's crashing and burning beside me, but um, yeah, I, I am still up in the air of whether or not I'm going to complete this series. The Heroic Age by Rob J. Hayes. Again, another one that I am up in the air of whether or not I'm going to complete the series and it has nothing to do with Rob J. Hayes or the books, other than they're just not my favorites. <laughs> they're not my favorites. And I think the writing style in these, I just don't really enjoy. And I know this because I read Titan Hoppers and I liked the writing style in Titan Hoppers better, but it still read a little YA. These don't necessarily read YA, but I don't know if I want to put myself through a third book written in this style, if that makes sense. Song of Cameria. I have finished it. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I have read Down Below Beyond and absolutely loved it as well. T.A. Bruno is definitely a favorite author for me because all four of his books, I think I've given four or higher. I think three were five stars and one was a four star and that was the middle book because it did something I didn't like. But Love T.A. Bruno. Love T.A. Bruno. The Last War by Mike Shackle. Unfortunately, I was on the final book of this series when I DNF'd it. So a little bit of explanation. There are certain things that I don't like that are particular to my taste. Slow pacing, whiny characters. There, there's, there's about like five different things that the, until the last did that I don't enjoy. Superheroes. I don't like superheroes. And it kind of culminated into this one scene where I was like, I didn't enjoy that at all. I really just did not enjoy that at all. I should have, especially with everything that led up to this point, I really should have enjoyed that scene for what it was. And I didn't. And I was like, okay, this just is not for me. Even though the first two books for me were absolutely fantastic. I just realized that maybe I was holding out hope that this one would work, even though I really had a problem with one of the characters from the beginning. So I mean, it is what it is at this point. I'm sad that I had to DNF it. I'm sad that it didn't work out for me because like I said, I loved the first two books. Burning Blade and Silver Eye, I have finished. I just finished Emperor of Ruin and I loved it. I loved it. Kit is one of my favorite characters and I just cannot get enough of her. And the ending of the book just made me so happy. <laughs> it's weird, but it made me so happy. And I don't, I don't know what else to say about that series other than I love it. And there is, like, it, oh. I've said so many times what the book's about, so I don't want to get into it, but pick it up. Read Ashes of the Sun. If you like that, continue because they are amazing. 
I can't get enough of them. And I, I'm to the point now, I want to reread the series. That's where I am in my mental state with Burning Blade and Silver Eye. Is like, let's just go back to that because can we top that right now? Maybe not. <laughs> Dave Abad, if you guys have seen my current TBR, I have The Kingdom of Copper on it. So I read the first book, really enjoyed it. I had a problem with the slow pacing, so I have DNF'd uh, The City of Brass before, but then finished it and gave it four and a half stars because of that slow beginning. But I do need to get to Kingdom of Copper. There's the City of Brass right there. There's the Empire of Gold. So I do own them. I just need to get around to reading them. Hall of Smoke. Now I read the first two books. I own the third. I own the third in audio, but I did end up selling my first two books because the second book went in a direction I didn't care for. And so it made the book very strange, very weird. And I ended up not really liking it, but I still want to continue with the series and go ahead and read Borrow of Winter. I just have the audio of it instead of a physical copy. So sometimes I forget that they exist, but you know, having them on this list, having this video made, I will see where I'm lacking. <laughs> the Dark Water Legacy by Chris Wedding. I have the Ember Blade. I have the second book. What is the second book? Uh, Shadow Casket. I have that book. I need to read the second book. I read the first one, loved it. It was kind of derivative, but not enough where I was put off by it. <clears throat> but yeah, loved the Ember Blade. So good. I can see that becoming a favorite series of mine, to be perfectly honest with you. But I still need to get to the Shadow Casket. The Age of Uprising by R.S. Ford, Engines of Empire, the book I've been trying to get everybody to read. I have caught up to what's published, Engines of Empire, Engines of Chaos, I've read them both. We just talked about this, Titan Hoppers by Rob J. Hayes. So I have decided I am going to DNF this series, even though I just talked really well about it earlier. Um, I like the writing in the Titan Hopper series, but, but I don't like progression fantasy and that's what this is. It's progression sci-fi. So I just don't like the way they're written. I don't like the way you level up. I don't like, there's a lot of things I don't like about progression fantasy or lit RPGs. So mm, I just don't like them. So I will not be completing that series. Hades and Persephone by Scarlet St. Clair. This is one that I did like. I like, I liked the first book, didn't see anything wrong with continuing, but since finishing it, I don't know. I don't know if it's one that I want to continue with. I think reading that one was enough and I'm done. It wasn't the greatest story. It was kind of, the main character was kind of stupid. So I, I did have problems with it. And then I read a Hades and Persephone story that was actually pretty dang good. And we'll get to that, we'll get to that. The Winter Night Trilogy. I DNF'd. I, I didn't like that one. It was a little too slow for me. So we just kind of, mm, not, I'm not going to continue with that one. Divine Cities by Robert Jackson Bennett. I read the first one. I have the other two on audio, but I need to get these in physical form so that I can immersive read them because the first one was a little difficult to do solely audio on. Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armantrout. I have read four of these books and I am DNFing the series. <laughs> I should have like DNF'd it after the third one because the Third one kind of went off the rails and not in a good way, but I wanted to go ahead and see if she could redeem herself with a fourth book and that did not work out. So we are DNFing that series. Good Girl's Guide to Murder. <laughs> the final book is on my Spooky Season TBR if you have not seen that yet. The Waystations Trilogy by N.C. Scrimjower. I hope I said that right. Ah, I have the second book. I need to read it. <laughs> I read the first one during SPSFC. Loved it. It was probably my favorite book of SPSFC. I even reached out to her and said that I thought that that was probably going to be my favorite book or it was my favorite book at the time that I had read it and still remains probably my favorite book of SPSFC. So the Waystations trilogy, uh, Those Left Behind, I have the second book. I need to get to it. The Aurelian Cycle by Rosaria Munda. I did finish that. Very excited to have that one finished because I really, really enjoyed that storyline. However, I do not own the third book. I actually had to do it on audio and I still really enjoyed it. It is YA, but it's very politically heavy. There are dragon riders and things like that. So very fun, but also politically heavy and kind of dark. So a lot of things that I just enjoy in general can be found in the Aurelian Cycle 
by Rosario Mundo. Legacy of the Mercenary Kings. I'm having a hard time finding the second book in this series. So I do plan to continue with it, but I need to get my hands on the second and third books and I might just have to order them from Amazon. Uh, but I do have the first one. I finished it, loved it. Amanesca by Ben Galli. This was one that was a Discord buddy read and I went ahead and jumped on it because I pulled it from my TBR jar and then I read it and I was like, okay, that's enough. I don't need any more. This is a very, like, I think it's lengthy series. I think it's like six books or something like that. Uh, but I'm not interested. Not interested. Swords and Fire by Melissa Caruso. So this is a series that I went back to read after I had read The Obsidian Tower and realized it was a secondary series. So I read the first book of the secondary series and the first book of the original series. I need to finish both of these. I own Quicksilver Court. I own The Defiant Air and The Unbound Empire. I, I own them. So I need to go ahead and read them. <laughs> but I have not yet done that. Legends and Legacies by Cal Black. No land for heroes. I'm actually currently picking my way through No Port in the Storm. I actually am considering setting it aside so that I can tackle it all at once, or not all at once, but you know, more of it in one setting, but we're getting used to the homeschool setting. We're getting used to everybody's schedule changing, all of that stuff. I want to be reading it so badly, so badly. And I love Millie. You guys probably know, I've talked about this so many times recently, that Millie is becoming one of my favorite characters of all time, and I'm dying to read No Port in the Storm. I'm dying to read it, but I just can't get the physical reading time that I need right now. Amina Al-Sarafi by Eze Chakraborty. I'm pretty sure I'm going to DNF this series. I, I, I'm not sure. When the next book comes out, I'll make a decision. But there were things I really did not like about that book. I ended up giving it 3.5 anyway, because there was a lot of things I did like about the book. But I don't know if I want to continue. See, this is what I'm saying. I don't know if I really actually like nautical fantasy. <laughs> Every nautical fantasy I've tried to tackle has had, I've had issues with it. I've just had issues with it. And um, Amina Al-Sarafi is no different. So we'll see when I get around to that. Uh, Dragon Spirits by L. L. McCray. I did want to mention this because I started the series and I got about halfway through before a certain trope started to, to get to me and that was amnesia. I want to give this one another try. This is the reason I'm mentioning this. I do think that it fell on the heels of like my brain saying, I don't care that this is the only thing I don't like. I don't want to read anything I don't like. And so I think it fell into that trap of me being burnt out on so many different things that I just couldn't handle another trope I didn't like at the time. So yes, I plan to pick this one back up. The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. I am officially right here, right now, DNFing this series. So I had the Grace of Kings on my Pango for all of a day and then it sold. So I didn't have any time to like really sit around and think about the decision that I made. Um, but I really, I struggled with the writing style of the first book. I know that it gets better plot wise as the series progresses, but I don't have the patience for it not to read that first book again. and. I don't like the way it's set up like all of these short stories compiled into one, but you know, eh. it's not the series for me. That's fine. The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. I have finished that. I really enjoyed this series. I really wish I could have got my hands on the fairy loot ones whenever they released those, but I was not quick enough. They're beautiful. They're beautiful, but I really enjoy this series a lot. And if you don't mind romance in your stories, I highly recommend it. Word About Diaries. I am still continuing on. I have read the first five so through the novel and then I need to continue on with what is released I think there's only like one or two more released right now so I'm not far behind The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen I read that first book I have the second book I'm eager to continue I will get on that as soon as I possibly can probably after these readathons have wrapped up or maybe you know I'll just figure out how to squeeze it into my readathons you never know the Nightshade Crown by Hannah Witten. Wah, wah, wah. I will be DNFing this series. I did not like the Foxglove King. The Empyrean, fourth wing. I will be continuing with this series. I really enjoyed that first book. I don't think it's great. Like, I don't think it's the greatest literature you could ever read. I don't think it's the greatest romance you could ever read. But man, was it addictive. That writing style was addictive. The plot was addictive. The characters were addictive. So I totally get why everyone is screaming fourth wing from the tops of roofs all over the world. It's fun. It is fun and it's worth the read if you are looking for something that is just going to capture your attention and hold on 
with both hands, like with your claws. <laughs> Emily Wilde, I'm so excited. I think this second book has released or is going to be releasing very soon. I wanted to get a matching <laughs> edition of it for my shelves because I have the Fairy Loot Special Edition of the first book. I, again, I'm not good at jumping on whenever those sales start, just not good at it. But I'm dying to get to the second book. I absolutely loved it. The Halfling Saga by Melissa Blair. If you guys watched my last wrap up or my last vlog, I don't remember which exactly it was in. I think it was my vlog. Uh, you will know that I'm dying to continue this series and it's sitting behind me, like the second book is sitting behind me and I'm tempted. I'm tempted. <laughs> Dragons of Terra by Brian Nasland. Really enjoyed this one. Now we are getting to series that I have very recently started. This one, I do have the second book back there somewhere and I fully intend to get to it as soon as possible. I, I really enjoyed that first book. I don't want to spoil too much with my vlogs coming and stuff like that. So, you know, I haven't done my wrap up yet. <laughs> Dark Olympus by Katie Robert. There's a good, this is the one I was talking about, the Hades and Persephone. That was actually really good. I will probably continue with these. I gave the first one 3.5 stars, but I think I, it's still good. It's still good. I, I enjoyed it. There were things that I didn't quite like about it, but I enjoyed it a lot. And then I am currently reading the first book of the Fetch Philip series and really enjoying that as well. But that is all of the series that I am currently reading, have finished, needed to talk about. I hope that gives you some idea of what may be coming in the future or if you should be following me, however that goes. All of my links are in the link tree link down below if you want to connect with me in any other way. And I feel like an accomplishment has been made in discussing all of the series I have tackled this year. <laughs> Bye.